there once. No better than I am at this point. So thank you for your prayers. Um, he's dealing uh, some pain and still having trouble sleeping. But thank the Lord I'm here. And thank the Lord for the snow. That always makes us feel better. Amen. Um, you want to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. Uh, verses 3 and 5. I don't know if I ever realized this before, but Jesus starts out the Beatitudes with uh, humility. Matthew 5, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Verse 3 says, the kingdom of heaven, verse 5 says, they shall inherit the earth. So the meek get the best of both worlds. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at verse 3 and then we'll uh, sp spend a little bit of time on verse 5. Verse 3 says, blessed are the poor in spirit. What, what does that mean? I don't say blessed are the poor, but it says blessed are the poor in spirit. To be poor in spirit, um, just what comes to my mind is possessing nothing. Someone who's poor has very little or nothing. Um, now, we know that we are rich spiritually, but on our own, we are poor. I can't, um, I don't have anything of my own. My righteousness, what does the Bible say? All of our righteousness put together is as filthy rags. Um, but we know that um, we can lean on Him. I believe someone said yesterday in Sunday school that um, a lot of people said we're well, using religion as a crutch well not really but in a sense that's true christianity I, I don't know about you well i do know about you i can't walk on my own i need someone to lean on so in that aspect if, if they want to call christianity or jesus a crutch yes he is because i need him to lean on i need someone or something to lean upon uh, but blessed are the poor in spirit those that possess little or nothing Verse 5 says, blessed are the meek. The Greek word for meek, and I might have shared this in devotion once before, but the Greek word for meek is pros. The word pros was borrowed from the military and relates to horse training. The Greek army would find the wildest horses in the mountains and bring them to be broken in. After months of training, they sorted the horses into categories. Some were discarded, some broken and made useful for bearing burdens. Some were useful for ordinary beauty. And the fewest of all graduated as war horses. When a horse passed the, condi the conditioning required for a war horse, its state, its state was described as prose, prose, which means meek. The war horse was power, had power under authority. It had strength under control. A war horse never ceased to be determined, strong, and passionate. However, it learned to bring its nat nature under discipline. See, we, we can be strong in the Lord but still be humble. We can, we can be strong in the Lord but yet uh, realize our weaknesses. A war horse learned to bring that nature under control. It will now respond to the slightest touch of the rider, stand in the face of cannon fire, thunder into battle, and stop at a whisper. It was now meek. Meekness is a reception of injuries. You see, they, that war horse was meek, so it, it had a balance. That's what we need. We need, to, we need to be balanced. We don't need to be, okay, I can do this. I can, we're strong in the Lord. Let's, you know, and that, but we tend to have confidence in our own selves when we have zeal without knowledge. But that knowledge lets us recognize that we can do nothing on our own. We need, a, we need Him um, and realize that uh, we are just a, that wild horse unless we're broken, unless we're humble. Yes, we have strength. Yes, we can fight, but we, we need to be sensitive to the rider or to, to our master. Meekness is a reception of injuries 
with the belief that God will vindicate us. Vengeance is his, and he will repay, says Romans 12 and 19. It little becomes us to take his place and do what he has promised to do. Uh, the thing about meekness, uh, humility, is this is the test of meekness. When someone comes against you, when someone speaks about you, when someone gives you a hard time, is what's your response? What is our response? Do we just blow up or do we uh, try to defend ourselves as if I'm somebody? Or do we have a meek and a humble spirit? I want to give us a few examples. Evan English evangelist George Whitfield learned that it was more important to please God than to please men. Knowing that he was doing, knowing that he was doing what was honoring to the Lord kept him from discouragement when he was falsely accused by his enemies. At one point in his ministry, Whitfield received a vicious letter accusing him of wrongdoing. His reply was brief and courteous. It said, I thank you heartily for your letter. As for what you and my other enemies are saying against me, I know worse things about myself than you will ever say about me. With love in Christ, George Whitfield. Could we, could, could we have the kind of reply? He didn't try to defend himself. He was more concerned about pleasing the Lord. Winston Churchill exemplified integrity and respect in the face of opposition. During his last year in office, he attended an official ceremony. Several rows behind him, two gentlemen began whispering. That's Winston Churchill. They say he is getting senile. They say he should step aside and lead the running of the nation to more dynamic and capable men. When the ceremony was over, Churchill turned to the men and said, Gentlemen, they also say he is dead. And of course, our greatest example is Jesus. Jesus said of, of himself in Matthew 11, 20, 11 and 29, take, upon, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in spirit, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Isaiah 53 and 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opens not his mouth. Meekness produces peace. Even in the midst of false accusations, or even if the accusations are correct, if people don't like you, if people give you a hard time, meekness produces peace. It is proof of true greatness of soul. It comes from a heart too great to be moved by little insults. It looks, it looks upon those who offer them with pity. He that is constantly ruffled, that suffers every little insult or injury to throw him off his guard and to raise a storm of passion within, is at the mercy of every mortal that chooses to disturb him. He is like the troubled sea that cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. True humility and and meekness, being poor in spirit, um, it'll cause us to, if nothing else, just keep our mouths shut um, in the face of um, conflict, in the face of adversity. And I was thinking this morning about us being in these last days, Brother Andrew's been preaching about uh, rapture ready. Um, in these last days, I believe we're going to have we're going to be tortured. We're going to be persecuted. Um, but the, the key to us having peace in the last days is to be meek and have wisdom to know what to say and how to react to our accusers and to those that are um, coming against us. I think about Stephen. He didn't retaliate. He was meek. And when those storms were coming, he said, Father, forgive me. What are your prayer requests this morning?